tongue and hold my breath Scared to rock the boat and make a mess So I sit quietly
What's wrong with being? What's wrong with being? What's wrong with being confident? Uh -huh. What's wrong with being? What's wrong with being? What's wrong with being, yeah. What's wrong with being confident? Uh -huh. divine souls and ladies of the golden path experience it's such an honor to be here with you again for our third and final day this is such a powerful piece this is called the entrepreneur code so if you're new seeing this masterclass for the first time or you happen to be joining us on day three this is called the trinity masterclass and I'm Myra Medhurst, and I specialize in the evolution of human consciousness. And I'm the founder of the Golden Path Experience. And this is where your ascension process gets to marry with enterprise. So it's an exquisite world. I welcome you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. And so it's a really powerful day today. I can feel the building, uh, the energy building. And I've got so many key pieces to share with you today that will really complete this sequence and tie it all together in such a neat little bow for you. Hopefully, that's my intention. And my intention is to have a very real activating conversation today. As you can see, the energy is very different today. All three archetypes hold such a different frequency. So day one, we kind of investigated the priestess code, and she's all about being and turning our attention inward to begin to strengthen the relationship we have with the inner architecture, our inner reality of who we truly are. And the beautiful piece about the priestess code is she invites us to stand in our divine flame of power. So many people miss this key piece. This is the first step. Are you in the divine flame of power? Are you in your personal power? And the divine flame of power also, we can interchange the words power with the word of truth. Are you standing and speaking in your truth? This is the priestess code of day one. Day two, we explored and had a conversation around the creative code. This is the doing. This is dropping into a gorgeous space of, of dissolving time and channeling and pouring through and going with the flow of our creative pursuits and really dropping the old paradigm and the old beliefs we have that creatives cannot make money or that we're the starving poor actor or the creative that's out of work. I really want us now to, to change, draw a line in the sand and change this reality, change this template. So the script we now want to be telling ourselves is that I'm most productive and produce the greatest amount of work, of, um, of masterpiece work when I'm channeling my creative code. 
and you'll begin to do and feel this water element and you want to surrender and allow the river of life to push you along and also it's so important this is holding the divine flame of love it's so important to follow your bliss in the creative code and do what you love and you will see why that is so important for this final piece which brings us into the entrepreneur code so I'm so excited to share this piece today because this is really where I believe I make the greatest impact these codes and sequences is what I've used in my own life to really strengthen my internal reality and it's also what I teach to my clients and they get ex incredible results. And I can tell very quickly if I need to tweak the creative code for a woman or if I need to drop her more into her being state and her personal power. Or it could be the final piece today where we're like, okay, you're doing really well with one and two. Let's look at this third flame, the divine flame of wisdom. This is what the entrepreneur code holds. So I just want to talk, uh, make a little bit of a distinction up front is what I'm finding more and more is that obviously the, uh, the, the term entrepreneur is now very commonly and widely used. So it's why I use that term. However, the true meaning of the word entrepreneur is actually a little bit different an entrepreneur for me is someone that has multiple offices around the globe. They have a huge organization of over 500 employees. They have a 2IC, if you don't know what that is, that's second in charge. They have COOs, CFOs. Like these are big, big systems and big businesses. I have not built that. And it's not what I have experience in. What I'm finding more and more is that I work with a lot of creatives, healers that have ignited their soul's highest mission. And when you do that, all you want to do is then share it with others. So what I'm finding is there's a very, very sweet spot. And when we want, we want to build these enterprises of light, we want to share our gifts and our sacred abilities now with the world, yet we think we have to build something quite complex and we get very overwhelmed and it doesn't have to be that way. I've worked with a woman in the past who's run a Fortune 500 companies and she has actually stepped out of that now because she realised and she told me that there is a sweet spot and the sweet spot is actually a lot smaller. And this is what I'm seeing in the new wave of these new earth frequencies. It's actually a lot simpler than we realize. And I, I truly hope today in, in this free masterclass, I can begin to activate the, this confidence and this reassurance that this is so simple now. If you have a laptop, if you have a mobile phone or access to a laptop or access to a mobile phone, you can go to a library and get free time with no cost on a computer and be connected to the internet. So what I encourage you today is actually to already appreciate the huge amount of abundance that is already in your life. If we are in the Western world, we have such an advantage or we're appreciating, we, we actually forget how wealthy we already are and how rich of resources we already have. Yeah, Dee, I can answer that question. There is a really specific formula that I'm now following. So Dee has asked in the Zoom chat, you know, that sweet spot of the smaller production, the smaller business. I've got some really beautiful pieces to share around that. So yeah, happy to, happy to answer that question at the end. So there's so, we are so rich in resources. So I just invite you now 
to just look around the room or look around wherever you're watching this masterclass from and just appreciate the abundance that you have now. You have a roof over your head. You have, there's food in the fridge. I have a crystal here. I have this laptop, my mobile phone. And actually one of the most powerful pieces, if you have access to a pen and some paper, this is my journal. And so just truly appreciate and drop into the abundance, the abundance that we already have access to. And so today is just not a conversation around money, but I'm very, very happy to have that conversation because I, I get so fired up um, and it breaks my heart seeing so many talented healers and talented priestess sisters and women that need and want to contribute, yet they are so stuck on this money piece. So I, I really love and I feel like it's a bit of my duty to have this conversation with women. And I must tell you, your money problems, they are not solved in the realm of money. Giving you more money will actually not help your money problems. That is not the root of the problem. So I don't look there to solve that problem. So very real, very activated conversation. I can't wait to jump into today. So the first piece I wanted to share is your environment. Your environment is key to this game. And what I mean by that is, first of all, we're going within and cleaning and, and getting very clear and strengthening, strengthening that relationship with the internal, the internal reality. Are we really mastering our thoughts? What scripts are we running? And then the environment piece for me is proximity. The reason I do these free masterclasses is because I'm giving you proximity. I'm giving you proximity into my world. And so I strategically position myself in and around people that have already mastered pieces of the puzzle for me. Because if I want to fast track and not go through all the lessons and all the hardships that that, that person has gone through. I want to get proximity and drop myself in as close as I can to that person. I want to see how they talk. I want to know how they walk. I want to know what foods they put in their body. I want to know their thoughts and how they think about money, how they think about their spiritual uh, development. I want to know and see how do they talk to their partner or their loved one? How do they integrate relationships into their business world? And so I want to learn from the people that have already gone before me. This is one of the key things you can do to fast track this code. So proximity is key. Every time you like a Facebook post, you were giving proximity, you were, you were closening and positioning, position, positioning yourself closer to that person. And so frequency is key here. Proximity, I go in and when people come to the live events, they get proximity with me. They are literally dialing in to all of the lessons, all of the hardships, all of the challenges, all of the trauma I've had to overcome to do the work, to drop myself into this. So this is a becoming energy. How can I very quickly position myself in environments that are set up for my success? They want to strengthen your internal reality with the divinity of who you are. And so we can fast track our growth and evolution this way. It's so important. Who are the people in your environment? What are we talking about? What conversations are we having? Because I know about me, I want to hang out with super, super aligned people that have conversations like this all the time. This is what I'm sharing now is what I talk about with my husband at night at the end of the day. 
we talk about this all the time. We talk about the ascension process. What can we learn? How could I do that better? Most of business has actually already been solved. And so all I want to do is position myself closer to someone that solved the problem so I can just ask them, like, how do you solve this problem? And so what I found is a lot of business is actually just problem solving. You just solve problems, one after the other, after the other, after the other. So I don't need confidence. I just need courage. We spoke about this in the creative code on the first attempt, you can have courage. And for those of you who don't know, this is actually my third business, the Golden Path Experience. So I do have a bit of a business and entrepreneurial background. My first business was a special events management company, and I was as a freelancer. And so I would run and put on government delegations, outdoor music festivals and multi-day, multi-speaker events in the personal development industry. I then got a taste for the spiritual world and a, a guide and a, a facilitator came out from LA and I organized his Australian tour of his book and his channeling experiences. So that was my first experience in the business world. The second business I had was a bricks and mortar business. The one thing about me is the great thing about me is I'm a Gemini. I will do a lot of things before I really nail something. So these are all experiences and wisdom that I bring to the table. The second business was the bricks and mortar business. And so I bought a failing restaurant in Melbourne because I could see where it needed tweaking and how I could get it into, um, into profit. So I went through that experience, rehired the team, rewrote the menu. I even did crystal pranic healing on the building and the staff. And I just led this team and I would coach them. I would keep the energy very high. And we began to go into profit very, very quickly. I will say that restaurant was open for seven days a week. And I truly sacrificed my health for the money and to make this, this business work. So I've pushed the extreme on all different, in all different ways. The third and final business is this, and it started with Temple of the Priestess. And this is so such an important move for me because I then really ignited my soul's highest mission. And I began to speak my truth from that first code where I was in my divine flame of power and I had the power to stand and speak in my truth and clearly and, and tell the world truly what was on my heart. And this is such a big piece to making money. In the new age, the age of Aquarius, are you prepared to tell the world honestly and truthfully what is on your heart? And you must be in your personal power to be able to do that, to stand and speak in your truth and this, why this piece is such a difficult one for the women that I attract is because we have such a strong persecution template over and over and over again. We keep reincarnating as priestesses or as white witches or healers, women of the light. And so what we do is we incarnate and we're so hardwired to speak about core universal spiritual truth. It's one of our greatest roles because we truly are the women. If you have a strong Lemurian Akash, we are the women. We are actually the Shah women of this planet. We are destined to, to navigate and to hold and be the guardians of this planet. And so the women coming out of Lemuria have this very strongly. So our template for reincarnating and sharing messages from, from the light is so hardwired in us, yet every time we do that, we have perhaps the persecution, the fear, the loss of life. 
And so this is like a broken record that just plays through the DNA and the energetic system. So what I do is we go through and clear that out. The only way to clear that out is to go through the center point of the cell, to go through the center point. It's like standing in the eye of the storm and still holding your position. And how we do that is with the first code. I am in my divine flame of power. Be still and know, not just think, know that I am a divine spark of universal consciousness. And the first and foremost relationship that I develop in my life is with my inner reality. This is what trumps all. This is like having the royal flush <laughs> if you're playing if you're playing poker. This is how you beat the house. This is how you build, beat, beat the odds of the casino. Do you know when you go in and you go into a casino, it's like the odds are against you already. Like they tailor the sequence in a way where the house always wins. But it won't win if you do this first step. I'm in my personal power and I'm a divine spark of God consciousness. So the entrepreneur code is the marriage of the first flame, divine power, and the second flame of divine love. If you wish to make money, if you wish to anchor in this final piece, now this is not just about money, okay? I'm just, I'll, I'm just, I get passionate about this subject because I truly want women and very talented healers to have a lot more money. Now you don't have to. You do not have to build a business. You are extraordinary in the ordinary. And I was running a live event last night in the temple for the winter solstice and the Palladian star mothers came through and they spoke, they, they, like, they spoke through me and they were saying, we are extraordinary already. If you do not want to build a business, you don't have to. It's okay to have a simple, exquisite, low profile, low key life, okay? What I'm doing is not better. You do not need to better yourself. This is so important. And so I will speak to one person at a, a live event. And I've had that experience. I've had the experience of just one person turning up. Yet I'm so anchored in the truth of who I am that I don't think of myself as a lesser person, like I did something wrong or something was up, like I've lost it, like I've lost the touch. You must understand whatever is in the external world is not a reflection of who you are. The truth of the matter is, is that you're a divine, unlimited potential just waiting to burst with stardust and share your love and gifts with the world. So it's okay if it looks very different to what I do. The flip side of that is I have also had experiences of teaching to 40 people in the room. And we were all crammed into my lounge room when I started this many years ago. And there was no longer room in the lounge room. I had to open up the dining room and let, I'm like just shoving people in the dining room, say like, like poke your head around so you can see me. Now, am I a better person because I had 40 people in the room? No, I, because I don't take my success or my self-worth from the external world. I don't even play in the external world. So we think less of ourselves. I'm not saying we all do, but the majority of you do. I mean, you think less of yourself because you have less money in the bank account or you haven't made a sale yet. You don't have the client numbers that you're, you're really wanting to get traction week to week to week. That has nothing to do with who you are and your flame of personal power. Indeed, in, and in fact, I would encourage you to drop all of those metric measures, 
go back to code number one and start there. Because the more you stand and speak in your truth, you will magnetize clients and abundance to you because the world is starving of it. The world is desperately seeking integrated leaders that know this stuff, that can talk about ascension and energetics. We can talk about the divine feminine and the divine masculine and how to unify that. I can talk about trauma, what that means, what that does, how you feel like you've got something missing and broken in your life, but how to alchemize that. And when you think you've got something missing in your life, it's the perfect catalyst to go out on the quest to find it and to reclaim it. And so we're scared of the pressure. And I can assure you, things do not get easier once you ignite your soul's highest mission. And once you're doing what you love, the challenges are still there. It's, it's just worthwhile, though. It's worthwhile because you love it and it's your divine mission. So you will put up with anything to wake up and to keep going. Even if you've been up all night with your son with a vomiting bug and you've not slept. That stuff doesn't matter. That is on the external. My connection is within and that's what drives. That's what drives this enterprise of light. So you can throw any challenge at me. You can take all my money. You can take um, the laptop. You can take the production offers. And I will still jump on this from my bedroom or from the front seat of my car. If I don't have access to that, I will go to the library and tap on into the free computer and stream from there. That's the level you need to play at. So I can assure you your lack of money or the lack of the business or the lack of getting traction or starting, the problems are not found in this code. The problem is back at step number one. There's an Atlantean teaching of how to make money <laughs> and it's woven through this masterclass. And so how it was taught to me is to start with that first divine flame of power. And you must be standing and speaking in your truth. You must be prepared to do the things that no one else is prepared to do. You must have so much of a connection to your divinity that you are prepared to go on stage and speak your truth and also have the fear of being ridiculed or not liked or judged. And even with that, you still get up and speak. Is this landing for women? So much of our abundance and our money is kept blocked by the throat chakra so much and I'm a testament to this I've had to work through this and the more I can release my throat and my voice the money just flows in is because humanity are so desperate for leaders for bosses for heads of a company or just just a business owner to have this as the first piece and then you marry that flame with the second flame of divine love from the creative code. You do what you love because it is the magnetic frequency. Yeah, I'll ask that. That's a great question, Dee. I can explain that. You must be doing what you love. The reason you need to do what you love is because your heart is magnetic. <clears throat> fifth dimensional frequencies 
is a strongly activated magnetic grid. This is a feminine principle of how to generate. So we've been using old frequencies on the planet, which is fire, like friction, lighting something to create power, movement, creates propulsion. And so that's such a masculine frequency. Yeah, the strike of the ignition when you turn the car on, that's a masculine principle. Do you know there are feminine ways to create propulsion? And the world, we're getting closer, but we're not ready yet. There is a feminine principle of propulsion and it is found in magnetics. It's a heart magnetic frequency. So we have the technology on the planet right now to run all cars without fuel, without petroleum, which you then have to burn. Yeah, it burns through the car engine. That's fire, that's heat. This is a masculine principle. If you want to start playing around with some of this and understand this truly, there are magnetic rings. It will be circular because it's the feminine principle and it will be a magnetic ring. And you can start to spin them and they will take on their own life force because now they're interacting with the unified field and the quantum field. So I do not need to push in the 3D reality to keep the movement. It's the movement happens itself. So this is how we create money in the fifth dimensional frequency. And as women, we stand in our personal power first and we be prepared to do the things that most people are not prepared to do. And you have to back yourself. And you have to back yourself because you have such a strong conviction of the truth of who you are. And that is an internal game. This is all an internal game. Then we drop into that creative code and we begin to do, we begin to channel, we do, we start to produce work. It might just be to one customer. It might just be to one listener. I don't care. Just begin. <laughs> start. Talk to one friend or one neighbor about this. And eventually it will grow and that neighbor will tell someone and now you're talking to two people and you've made two sales. But don't think of yourself better because now you're speaking to two people and don't think of yourself as a lesser or more lousier person at this game because you're speaking to one. That's all on the external. Your message and your connection does not change. So when we unify that first flame of power and we um, unify it and marry it with the divine love, this is the fastest way to make money. And so Dee has asked a question in the Zoom chat, like why, why the throat? Because the throat, like what is the throat connection with money and abundance? because of the energetic frequencies that are now elevating and changing on the planet. If I was giving this masterclass 100 years ago, I would talk about the base and the sacral, okay? The game has shifted. So yes, you want to be grounded. Yes, you need that anchor of the earth star chakra, but once you unlock the throat, you simul they have a the throat has an intrinsic connection with the sacral. And so the more you release and unlock the throat and actually speak your truth, it will begin to heal and balance out the sacral because they're on the same harmonic frequency. That's why I do. And so because of the shifting and evolving energies on the planet, this is why I don't teach at the base or the sacral anymore because the game isn't being played there. To move forward, we need to do this and the, and the sacral will then get taken care of because we're actually up here. If you're on the leading edge of these energies, 
If you're an intuitive and a star seed, this is where we need to begin. And the more work I do with releasing the woman's throat, unlocking the jaw, so much tension in the jaw, the more the sacral gets cleaned out. And I don't even have to touch the sacral anymore. Correct. So humanity, ah, yes, D has put into the uh, Zoom chat. Yes, the humanity as a collective are moving through the chakras. And as we enter the Aquarian age, yes, indeed, we are moving into the throat chakra. And so the blue color ray, yeah, what code had the blue color ray? The first code. So this is the first building block. That's why it's the divine flame of power, standing in your personal power. And are you standing and speaking in your truth? This is the blue color ray of the first day. Yeah, she's got goosebumps. Of course you do. You're remembering now. Good. <laughs> that makes me pleased. <laughs> so when you remember this coding, it's true. It, it, you will feel the goosebumps. You'll feel the remembrance of how light workers and priestess sisters and star seeds and intuitives we're hardwired differently. We're here to play a different game. And I'm like, thank God. <laughs> like, we need to re-script and play a different game now. It's like that computer stimulation, stimulate, stimulation game is now finished. I'm like, can we be done with that game? So we're not hardwired like other people on the planet. Yeah, we're old souls and we come in with a stronger Akashic, personal Akashic records, and we come in with a stronger tendency to be able to relax and curl out our DNA. Yeah, so we've got, not that we've got better, I mean, anyone can do this, it's just harder to do it when you're stuck down in the base and, and the sacral still. And also as the collective consciousness evolves and there's more finely tuned energies on the planet, I, I strongly caution a lot of healers, you will notice this if you're, if you're really connected in, is that your healing modalities will become softer and gentler and more refined. So we don't have to do all this huge purging and heavy lifting and like hard hitting shamanic work anymore. Because, yes, that has a place, but that also had a place in a denser reality and a denser consciousness. So we're vibrating higher now. So the way that we heal has shifted. That's why I do all the work up in the throat now, because I only need to make one small adjustment in the throat and it completely loops down and then uncoils at the sacral. This is fascinating stuff. I teach this in my work. <laughs> A great question. So you decide you do not have to build this like this, but I do want to go back to that sweet spot and I and I really want to have a conversation around money as well. So money, don't look to the money issue to solve your money problems. Please go into day one and watch the priestess code. You need to be standing in your personal power into the doing what you love and then you just need to play the long game and you will make money please do not ask for trades or swaps on your sisters i'm really wanting to change the reality and we need to be paid for the divine work and the divine service that we do okay let's just drop that please pay your sisters for what they do so it can be reciprocated back to you okay this is an important piece Humanity is not mature enough yet to go into the trade system or the swapping system. This, it, it is a great um, goal to have, and I believe we will reach it, but I do not believe anywhere near that we are near the maturity level to pull that off yet. So please pay your sisters for the healing work and the wisdom that they bring into your life and then work out a way how you could offer something back or offer your services to another system, okay? So important. Okay, I'm just looking at my notes to see what I have covered. I'm going to share my screen now.
All righty, ladies, day three, the entrepreneur code. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so here's a beautiful summary of the journey that we've been on. There's the priestess code from day one. If you're joining us for the first time, you can go back and watch the earlier masterclasses, day one and day two. You'll find them in the guide section of the Facebook group. And there's PDF and workbooks here you can print out. So this is the entrepreneur code for today. And this is have. My gosh, having. We've been in the B. We've done the do. Now I have. I have. And when I have, I work the divine flame of wisdom. And that wisdom code is you are not better and you are not lesser for having because our self-worth is not found in any of the external world. Your self-worth is found back on day one, the being. <laughs> and so this is a system that you just keep circling through. You know, you might be in a stage or a season of your life where you need to kind of anchor in the creative a bit more. You need to do a bit more doing and channeling and doing things that you love. Or you might be like, okay, let, let's take this up a notch. This, let's go into the entrepreneur code. This is the element of earth. This is physicality. This is the color ray of yellow, of wisdom. This is the master now. And so I love to call this the CEO over my cellular structure. And this action is becoming, becoming. And so that's why we use the code, that, that beautiful bit of homework of getting that dream runner to work for us. If you don't know what the dream runner is, you can go back to day one to watch that piece of the homework. But I do not look to my past or my present to create or to know what the next move is. I look to my future and I dream that back and drop it into my current reality. And that informs me, okay, what woman do I need to become to realize those future dreams that I have for myself? How does that woman dress? How does she talk? What business acronym does she have? What people has she studied with? What foods does she put into her body? Who do I need to become on all levels? And, what, and I let that inform my current reality to know what the next piece is to know what the next move is and it's from that magnetic grid that I draw in the next opportunity or the next client or the next conversation I need to have this is powerful stuff and so the complete sequence then become becomes I think I apply with my hands which is the creative. And then finally, at the becoming, the master level is when you know something by your heart. So it's all good to think about something, think about your projects, think about your internal reality. And you can even see day one, my master class is like airy, it's dreaming. It's because I like channeling way too much priestess energy. And so you can hang out in that zone for as long as you want to in life, but there are other pieces to the sequence. And so the creative is like, okay, go out in the world and apply it with my hands, what it is that I'm thinking about, what I philosophized on. And then the, in, the master level is becoming, becoming that woman, becoming that leading lady of light. 
becoming that pillar of light that begins to build the infrastructure that opens the gateway that directs and calls people into the golden age into the new earth frequencies i need to become that woman how i do that is i do code one code two code three and i just keep looping back around this is not a complete system once you reach that master level you go again <laughs> because there's more and more things to learn there's more and more pieces of of of, of who you truly are to integrate and so I want to talk about this um, pressure. Thinking that this journey is easy or thinking, you know, that there's such a term at the moment, you know, I attracted the clients with ease and grace or the business is now ease and grace. It's all ease and grace. And it can be, it can be. But I just want to give you some balm for when the days are hard. Because inevitably, they will be. They will be. And so I just, I was speaking to a sister last night at the temple and I shared this story with her. So I'd love to share it with you now. Is that we need pressure. We need the pressure to help us evolve and to help us grow. Because like I said, the enemy of an extraordinary life is a comfortable one. So there needs to be some point of pressure applied. And this is indeed how a pearl is made. I have a black pearl on today from the islands of Vanuatu. <laughs> and also a diamond. It is the pressure and the compacting and the heat that needs to be applied to strengthen the brilliance of a crystal, of a pearl. It's like the imperfection of the pearl is needed so it coats itself again in its brilliance, in its sheen and its shine. So don't be put off by hard days or challenges. They are part of strengthening your vessel and they are a part of strengthening your humility and to humble you. One of the most humbling, I still get emotional about it, but one of the most humbling pieces for me is in my own financial journey of owning property and not being able to make the repayment. This is not a recent story. This was back uh, some over a decade ago. But I had to be so humble in that week where I had to call uh, St. Vincent de Paul to drop off a food voucher because I had no money to purchase food just for that week, just that moment in time. I was reduced to that level. And it was such a humbling experience because... I knew that that wasn't the truth of who I truly am. And so I just remained in that inner connection. And I didn't think less of myself because I got myself into that muddled mess just for that week. Yeah. And so it was such a humbling, powerful, liberating experience to be reduced to that that low, low level, and to still think great thoughts about myself and to still believe that I'm still a child of the universe and that I matter and that my soul's highest mission is important and that I'm put on the planet for a reason and it's okay. It's okay to take some hits. It's okay to be knocked down. Just don't stay there. <laughs> okay. Like just do what you need to do. So I just made the call. I said, look, it's just, it's, it's horrendous this week. You're going to, I need a voucher. I need to go. And it was so, I felt so much love and I felt so connected to humanity 
And I, and this beautiful elderly husband and wife, elderly couple came over and they knocked on the door and they sat down and we, we had a chat and a cup of tea and they gave me the voucher. It was a hundred dollars. I'm like, there's so much abundance around the world. And it's just think, we're, we just think we're separate from humanity and, and we consider ourselves isolated on this journey when we are so not. We are so connected. We are all in this grand cosmic play all together. And if we just lend a helping hand, and so that's one of my visions with these free masterclasses is that someone struggling with money can still have incredible, free, high quality content to immediately start changing their lives. Okay, so I really hope this is landing. And I just, I've, I've received the most beautiful messages this week of different pieces of the puzzle really dropping in for women. And they're like, oh my God, like I woke up differently. Something I've been struggling with for six months overnight has now landed and integrated. And it's like, I can finally see like my, my weekly schedule feels good. It feels okay. It feels aligned. And I know a lot of you are mothers because I'm a mother myself. So I'm going to attract clients that have a very similar template and experience to who, to who I am. Okay. So just going back, circling back around. So I hope that story gives you some inspiration to please just begin. Please just take the first step. So um, there is a very, very sweet spot in the business that I'm finding now in the current work that I do. So if you're drawn to the work and the business that I run, it's a very small business model, but it has very low expenses and it has a very high profit margin. So something I talk about and teach is making sure the business model you're going into is actually conducive to your lifestyle most people do not ask this question one of the first questions I will always ask someone that I'm working with is okay what structure what business model do you wish to build because each different structure requires different contact points for example when I had the cafe it requires a huge amount of time it was open seven days a week. That's a business structure that I will not do again. So you need to define, clearly define the business structure that you wish to create and we reverse engineer it. Is that going to suit the lifestyle that you deserve and you desire? So there's a sweet spot and that is for me what I'm building is that I now build the business through a laptop and a mobile phone. I can do it from anywhere in the world. And I have two, uh, sorry, I have one VA from the Philippines that supports me. And then I have one or two subcontractors that I bring in at different points of where I'm at in the stage of creating. And then my husband, he's only recently stepped across and he helps with some of the video editing as well. I now make enough business, uh, sorry, I now make enough money in my business to support my whole family and my husband. My husband at the moment is going through a time in his life where he'd like to reassess what his passions and creative endeavors are. So one of his passions is he went to film and TV school. He knows how to edit film <laughs> so that he's stepped into that role now. And so um, I highly encourage women to really think about what structure of the business they wish to create. And please, I want, to, I want you to just consider that lean is very mean <laughs> and simple. Simple can still be incredibly potent and incredibly profitable. And you can actually remain in your peace and in your priestess vibes because you've built something so, so simple using these codes layered with the soul's highest mission and really getting into that magnetics of the fifth dimensional frequency. Everything is magnetic in the fifth dimensional, okay? Um, I want to just talk about um, one final piece because it came up last night and I'd love to share that is um, this level of discernment 
that's now required and especially uh, this, oh, don't get me started. <laughs> a, a woman was sharing um, a modality that she's studying. She's studying kinesiology uh, all online through a teacher or facilitator. Um, and she was telling me how much money she spent for that. And I, I was just gobsmacked. It, I, I think it's an obscene amount of money to charge that. And so I just want to caution people that there are some people in the new age healing space without an integrated approach. And I, this is so key. This is the entrepreneur code. And so you know how we were talking about those invitations? The priestess is the silent invitation. The creative is the passionate invitation. The entrepreneur is the integrated invitation. So we need discernment moving forward. If something is an obscene amount of money, please have some caution. You, you do not need to spend huge amounts of money on your health. You can go on a water fast, which costs you nothing, and you can do that for an extended length of time. I assure you it is highly effective. I know a lot about water fasting. If you wish to meditate, you can go to Vipassana for free. There are so many free resources around the planet available to all of us now where you can start to get help and support. And then I want you to actually review and assess the teachers or the mentors from an integrated perspective. So you need discernment. This is truly the teaching of the golden path experience. And so if you've got pen and paper, can you please write these next pieces down that I'm going to share with you? You People in the past would fake it right? They would fake one area of their life. They, uh, yeah, yeah, great, Zoe. Thank you for joining us. The golden, so you can fake it. So people in the past will be really um, proficient in one area of their life, but then they could be really quite lousy in they've got great money and they've got great financial advice, but they're absolutely so lousy in their health and their wellness. So where we're moving forward in this higher collective consciousness, that's not going to cut it anymore. So you need to have a strong level of discernment around the integration of a whole as to who that person truly is. So when I teach the golden path experience, I teach across 12 dimensions of your life. Like I said, if I'm, if I'm called to work with you and we work on your money or your business problems, I don't even look there first because I can assure you that's not where you fix the problem. If I just give you more money, it actually won't fix your money problems. So the problem is not solved in that department. So here are the 12 dimensions of life that I mentor and teach on. The first one is health and fitness. The second one is your intellectual world. What thoughts, what books are you reading? What content are you reading? What, what thoughts are you putting into your head? The third dimension is your emotional world. The fourth is your character. Who do you truly want your character to emanate? Who are you becoming? How do you hold yourself in life? What do you want to be known as or remembered for? The fifth dimension is your spiritual life. Six is your love relationship. And if you don't have a partner, that could just simply be the love that you have for yourself. This is love relationship. The next category is parenting. How do you parent? That is such a revealing, <laughs> revealing display of someone's character. 
and how integrated you are as a human being, as a leader, as a leading lady of light. How do you parent? What's your social life like? Are you having fun? Do you have friends around you? Do you have a community that know you and appreciate you? It can be online or it can be in person, but what is your social life like? So when I get an entrepreneur coming to me and they're working, you know, too much, 24 seven, they're all connected. And I ask like, how's your social life going for you? They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, when did you last have fun? Do you know the game of this is actually to have fulfillment first? You are whole and extraordinary and it's okay to have fun right now as you are. They're like, what? Yeah, it's okay to do what you love and have fun. So how's your social life? What's your career is the next dimension. What is your career? What do you do? What do you wake up in the morning and you burn for and you want to deliver that and you want to be of service and you want to contribute that to humanity? What is your financial life like? So the career, the previous piece is what makes the money. The, your financial life is what holds and secures the money. They're different energies. Most people put financial and career together that is a rookie mistake. And please, if there's anything you can take away from this, this today's code is separate your career from your financial life. They're separate. One will produce the money. One then is the motherly energy and tends to it and holds it safe and sacred. And money for me is just simply a tool. I don't care if I've got more money or less money. It actually doesn't bother me. It doesn't change who I am as a being. Fulfillment first. I'm fulfilled. If I die right now or tomorrow, I'm completely happy and fulfilled. And so fulfillment first. The next dimension is quality of life. This is like toys, holidays. Um, like what's your quality? Do you want to have dinner parties? Quality of life. Do you want to experience other parts of the world? Do you want to set up a, um, a charity or an orphanage? Or do you want to save the animals or help, help an animal? You know, one of my greatest little kind of secret little missions that I've had going in the background is... The money is just such a tool now because I get direct, I get to direct it now in ways that are really meaningful and for the light. And so a um, past client of mine, she lives out in the bush and her neighboring property, a farmer, they had two horses that were not being fed and there was no grass on the land or in the paddock at the time. And I said, it's okay. It's like, it's okay. I'm going to call the she linked me up with the closest agriculture store and I just bought hay and I just set it and forget it. And so the horses get delivered so many bales of hay every fortnight. And so we're rehoming them, but I was able to support them. And, and it's like horses have such a strong, beautiful meaning. It's just like, you can do cool things like that. Okay. And I'm not sharing that to impress you. I'm just sharing that to, to inspire you that we can really use money as a fantastic tool on this planet. And especially because most of the money has been generated through the patriarchal. So I call that a lot of the money that's been generated on the planet is blood money. It's actually been generated or amassed through war, famine, malnutrition, um, child sex trafficking, like not great endeavors. So there is a huge mission for women to actually take that money back and we need to wash it through the feminine hands. We wash it clean. We restore the balance to the money and then together we can create the fifth dimensional and new earth frequencies. So there's a very strong desire in me for women that are sensitive to these energies that we must, must, must make money we must, even if you don't want it, 
please just do it for humanity's sake because the money needs to be washed clean. So when a feminine principle generates money, we make sure that our family is safe and protected first. Then we use those financial resources to take care of our community and we'll make sure that there's quality food in our house. We'll make sure that the, the neighbour won't go without. It's a very different energy. And so we're not looking at multiplying it quickly. We're looking at channeling it in the correct way. And so the money on the planet does need to come through the feminine principle. This is why I'm so passionate about women intuitive and healers making money. Get over your stuff and do it at least for humanity if you can't do it for your sake. There's a very strategic, energetic step that needs to kind of drop in for us to keep going on, on this pathway into the new into the new fifth dimensional. And the uh, twelfth and final dimension I look at is the overall golden path experience. How does that show and live and breathe in your life when we bring all those dimensions together? And I want women following the golden path within. Your path will look very different from mine. You're not better and you're not lesser for your path looking very, very different. You do not need to work online to make money if you don't want to. Okay. So the create, sorry, the entrepreneur code is that integrated invitation. And I'm going to leave you with this. I am the creator of my reality. That is the integrated invitation. And a beautiful quote here. I'll leave everyone on this quote. But you are the creator of your reality. You were granted this ability. You have free will to create and to build whatever it is you want on this planet. You are an unlimited aspect you are a portion of God, a portion of the universal creator and of all that is. There's the flame of wisdom. And I love this quote by Joe Dispenza. He speaks always about the electric field at the head of the thought process and the magnetic field of the heart. And we need to bring these two into unification. And that's what's called the electromagnetic field. The only way we can change our lives is to change our energy. And I use the future dreaming process to begin to do that. To change the electromagnetic field, we are constantly broadcasting. In other words, to change our state of being, we have to change how we think and how we feel. And here are some lovely just kind of prompts and reminders. My life becomes my message. And I really invite the women watching this in the group to feel love for your future, like begin to fall in love with your future and become more present and less programmed by the past. We think with our head, we apply with our hands using the creative code and then finally at the master level, you know it to be true by your heart. And at the final words are, she built this. I want you to become so masterful and so proud and in complete self-responsibility and total ownership that you are indeed the creator of your reality. And I built this, everything. And I want you to say the same and be proud and be of, of conviction when you say it to yourself, that everything, everything you see around you the good, the fantastic, the ugly, the bad. I built that. She built this and own it. And the fastest way to transform is to own every single part of the truth of who you are, even the not so great parts. I hope this has truly landed for some people. This is a big, big piece, a big piece. I'm so happy I get to share this masterclass with you, Divine Women.
I'm going to pop back into the Facebook group probably early tomorrow morning and share about the Golden Path Experience Shop. It's all if you are inspired by this work, if you feel like you'd like to continue the journey or want to investigate kind of other offerings or other uh, pieces that I can support you on. You do not have to work with me. And look, if there is a resonance, you will know. You will know there's an intelligent, innate part of your intelligence of who you are that will know if we're a fit or not. So I love you so much, ladies. Thank you so much for joining this masterclass. Please post any questions or comments or insights or breakthroughs that you've had into the Facebook group. I'd love to see how this experience has really altered your life and provided some healing balm to, to help you transform these pieces and truly live an extraordinary life where you get to ascend with all these wild energies going around. And also, if you feel called, you can begin to make steps on your beautiful enterprise of light and help other people in your divine service and the gifts that you have to share with the planet and be divinely rewarded for that in beautiful love. Thank you so much, sisters. I love you and follow your golden path.